Hi, Phil. Thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us today. Uh, could you start by telling us a little bit about yourself, your current role at Yajo, and your background within Midcast Cricket? Sure, Louise. So uh, my academic background is in chemical engineering. Um, I started at Chemin Electronics in 1996 as a development engineer in uh, the panel and capacitor department. Um, and I helped develop the panel polymer product line, uh, which was actually a new technology at the time. And when at, soon after joining, we decided to join forces with NEC in Japan to jointly commercialize this technology. Uh, then in 2002, I became director of town technology in 2004, uh, VP of town technology in 2006. I was promoted to uh, CTO of, uh, of Kemet. Um, and then soon after that, we acquired some other capacitor technologies. So I took on the role of uh, supervising the R&D for that. Um, to sort of fast forward, um, in 2020, we were acquired by uh, Yagio. Um, this year, I became the CPO of uh, Yagio. Thank you. And could you briefly describe Yagio's business areas? Yeah, so Yagio is a leader in electronic components. Um, our specialty is development, manufacturing, and sales of plastic components. Actually, we're the number one company in the world in resistors and panel of uh, polymer capacitors. And we're a significant player in the other capacitor technologies as well as the uh, magnetic components. And right now we're expanding into uh, other electronic components such as uh, sensors. And we also have a joint venture with uh, Foxconn for uh, semiconductors. So we're really happy to be collaborating with you at Yadjo, but how did you find out about small tech and what led you to evaluate small tech's capacitor technology? Okay, so we actually were introduced to, to small tech by a Swedish connection. The former uh, Kemet CEO was Swedish, so that's sort of how we uh, found each other. But then, you know, soon after that, I did some investigation of what small tech was doing. We saw a lot of potential in the technology uh, because of the high surface area that you could get from the, the carbon nanofibers um, so that, you know, led us to believe that we could get a uh, high capacitance component uh, and a small footprint um, so that we proceeded ahead with the, you know, relationship. So could you describe the trends for the next generation of capacitive technology and which Capacitor segments, do you see that the small tick capacitor would fit with it? Yeah, in the, in the electronics world, especially in the capacitor world, there's a constant drive to have smaller and smaller components. Um, you know, this is driven by the increased functionality in electronic devices. Um, so every year, for example, in your mobile phone, there's you know more and more features crammed into essentially the same space. Um, and they also want to shrink electronics because uh, they want to put more battery in there, right? So everybody's complaint about their device is not a mobile device, it's not a battery life. So uh, that's another reason for shrinking concurrence. So we saw the uh, small patch CNF NIMP technology as, uh, you know, as most suitable for applications where really thin uh, capacitors are needed. So, and this would typically be in the mobile or wearable. A segment of electronics, um, you know, particularly interesting application for the small te technologies underneath the Bolivar array and processor, uh, where the semiconductor fabrication processes of the CNF new, uh, capacitor lends itself to having terminations that we make nicely with this configuration. So, how would you say that small tech technology compares to what's on the market today? Yeah, let me. Uh, try to answer that question. So capacitors uh, with ballot metal oxides or field oxides are, you know, today are manufactured by etching a metal foil or trying to reduce a metal salt to make very uh, small particles. Um, you know, small text capacitors are a different approach because they use a nanofabrication process, which has the potential of much more control 
of the surface morphology. Um, so this can result in the capacitors with much more abler properties. Uh, in addition, the fabrication is done in the semiconductor fab uh, with several advanced materials and processes available for fabrication. Uh, so in addition, you know, eventually there's a, the potential to directly integrate the small pick process with the semiconductor guide. Um, so all these, uh, you know, give that, that technology great potential. And how large is Yagio's business in the segments? So Yagio's components are primarily used at the board level and not directly into the processor or on the semiconductor die. So the great thing about this technology is it represents uh, revenue expansion for Yagio without cannibalizing existing business, so really a win-win for both companies. What is your vision for the collaboration and, and the new family of ultra-thin capacitors? Uh, yeah, it'll start out as a technology that targets the use case where these thin, small, and high capacitance um, pro um, components are needed. Um, you know, the the geometry of them will also lead itself to low ESR and ESL products. Um, and also, we expect them to have a high stability of capacitance with temperature and voltage. Uh, so, those would be in the mobile, wearable, high performing you know, computing se segments. Um, as volume increases, you know, we expect the cost to come down and then the uh, application areas to expand. So we've collaborated for a while now, but could you describe the nature of the co collaboration at this point and what our key goals for the community are? Sure. So uh, we're currently in the joint development phase. Uh, so the goal for 2023 is to move from the lab phase to engineering samples that are manufactured in a commercial foundry. Um, the IGO and Smoltec will both test these samples for electrical characteristics and variation in the process and reliabilities, then if certain goals are met, uh, the IQ of small tech will proceed to the manufacturing qualification phase. So when would you want to see the first small pick capacitor available in the market? So, you know, we visited several customers in Taiwan this week with, uh, with small tech, and what we found out is that it's clear uh, that there's a high interest in these uh, capacitors fabricated using this technology. So, and we believe that the CNF MIM capacitor has several advantages over the incumbent silicon capacitors in the market. So the sooner we get these capacitors to market, the sooner we can get design and customers, I believe they're you know, ready for that. So as I mentioned, we hope to have our first samples made in the commercial foundry later in 2023 and we get sampled to the customers after that. Thank you so much. Is there anything that you would like to add regarding small book technology, the capacitor market, or the ASIO? Mm -hmm. So small tech and Yagio bring very complementary skill sets uh, to the partnership. Uh, small tech has the deep technical knowledge on how to fabricate the CNF link capacitors on silicon, and Yagio has over 40 years of experience in manufacturing, testing, and sales of electronic components and also has the support systems for scale up and manufacturing and sales. So it's a very good test. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Louise.